Hey, what's going on, A Push Peeps? Got another good one for you today. This is video number eight, part of period two, and goals and interests of colonists, Metacom's War, and the Pueblo Revolt. Metacom's War and the Pueblo Revolt are specifically mentioned in the curriculum. They're fair game. Make sure you can explain them. Makes for a great short answer question or information in an essay about colonial America. Before I begin, shout out to Mrs. Fletcher's class in Cedar Hill. You guys rock. Thank you for watching and best of luck this year. All right, so Europeans and colonial interests often varied. The goals and interests of Europe were different from the colony. Over time, both sides increasingly began to mistrust each other. The British colonists sought to expand. This is especially true pre and post the Seven Years' War of 1754 to 1763, and Britain's going to resist this. They want them in a smaller area that they can keep control over them more. Colonists were upset over things like territorial settlements and frontier defense. We saw this in Bacon's Rebellion that many colonists living outside of Jamestown wanted protection from Native Americans on the frontier. Colonists were also upset over self-rule. Many governors of the British colonies were appointed by the British. They had no say in the governors like they did colonial legislatures. An example of this is Edmund Andros. He was the governor of the very unpopular Dominion of, of New England, which combined several colonies in a restricted town meetings. And thankfully for the colonists, this only lasted a short time because Sir Edmund Andros was actually captured and thrown out of the colonies. Colonists were also upset about trade, the Navigation Acts, which stated they could only trade with Britain, so they were not allowed to trade with France or Spain, for example, and potentially make more money. And co colonists often resisted the Navigation Acts by smuggling. That's America's pastime. Okay, let's jump over to Metacom's War. So Metacom, or better known as King Philip to the colonists, he was the leader of the Wampanoag Indians. And they had good relations with the colonists early on. The natives taught them how to farm, and they tried to live in harmony with the colonists in New England. But over time, encroachment or coming onto Native American land by the colonists led to issues. And in 1675, three Wampanoag Indians were hanged in Plymouth, and this really starts Metacom's war. So initially, Metacom and his side was successful, but the Iroquois Indians, a different tribe, gave aid to the colonists. In 1678, the war will end. So this war lasts for about three years. Metacom was captured and killed. You can see this stone here is the spot where he was captured. Many natives that lived, that survived the war, were sold into slavery in the West Indies. And the significance of the war is this reinforces the image of natives as savages to many colonists. And native resistance in New England will decrease. After this war in New England, there's very little Native American resistance because the colonists were able to successfully outnumber them. And there is a continuation of colonial expansion onto native land. So this is an example of conflict between natives and and the British colonies, let's take a look at one between native and the Spanish colonies. And this is known as the Pueblo Revolt. The outcome is very different. And this could make for great information for a compare and contrast essay about Spanish colonies and the British colonies. So the Pueblos were natives that were located along the Rio Grande region of the southwestern portion of the present day United States in New Mexico, for example. Pueblo is a Spanish word for town named after their distinct buildings. And Spain established Santa Fe in New Mexico in 1610, and they ruled the Pueblos harshly. There were 2,000 Spanish and 30,000 Pueblos, so the Pueblos drastically outnumbered the Spanish. So the Pueblos are going to revolt because Spanish priests and the government suppressed native practices that were inconsistent with Christianity. So, for example, Native American worship in in particular, these dolls here were seen as icons, and the Spanish sought to stop this warship. Spain also demanded tribute and land from the Native Americans, so the Pueblos will revolt. Now, Pope, he is the, the leader of the Pueblo revolt. He, kill, he and his followers killed hundreds, and they forced the Spanish to flee from their region. Now, Spain is going to regain control in 1692, and if you go to the Capitol. If you're ever in Washington, D.C., go to the Capitol building. It's a free tour. It's one of the greatest things you'll ever see. Each state is allowed to send two statues of a person who has had a significant impact on the history of the state. 
you can actually see Pompey's statue in the Capitol building. And the significance of the revolt is that Spain becomes more accommodating. Definitely know this word. So they become more accepting of natives after the revolt. They realized that the natives drastically outnumbered them, that they were willing to fight for their cause. So the Spanish, so the Spanish became more accommodating and there was more religious toleration. So that's a vastly different outcome than Medicom's war with the English. Okay, let's do a quick recap. Tensions between colonists and England over be able to explain how these were issues over frontier defense, self-rule, and trade. Medicom's war and its impact on natives in New England and the Pueblo Revolt and its impact on natives in the southwestern portion of the United States. All right, guys, look forward to seeing you back here for video number nine, Impact of Transatlantic Exchanges, First Great Awakening, Enlightenment, and Mercantilism. We got a bunch in there. It's going to be an important video. Thank you for watching and best of luck on all your tests. And have a good day.